a giant bridge buffeted by wind and other shocks. How does it bear up structurally for decades? Joining the mask of Tutankhamun, a masterpiece of different joining techniques. Humankind have diligently pursued these techniques for millennia. Nowadays, joining dissimilar materials has become a hot topic. For example, cars. By joining aluminum to steel in the frame, the weight can be reduced by some 25%. This could radically change the future of the automobile. Joining different kinds of metal together in cars or wherever is going to be a huge new technology. Joining dissimilar materials can indeed be advantageous, but one combination is said to be impossible. Aluminum, which is super soft, plus cemented carbide, which is super hard. Try to weld them and... It snaps right off. If these two could be joined reliably, the technique could be used for spaceships. Using aluminum, the body could be made lighter. But the outside would be tough cemented carbide. You could build a rugged space vehicle with lower launch costs. So that's our challenge. Join cemented carbide and aluminum. The longtime hero of joining is the screw. And then there's soldering or brazing. A soft metal filler is melted and acts as an adhesive. What do we do? What do we do? Deploy a fantastic new technology. It's pride on the line here. A real fight. Make it stick with supreme skills! Welcome to Supreme Skills. I am your host, Chihara Jr. Okay, Jr. Joining this similar materials. Clearly, I have never said that before. Crazy technical, but huge. A really important contest. Joining metals with the same properties is actually easy, right? Aluminum to aluminum, steel to steel, they're the same. But when you try to stick together two different metals, it doesn't work so well. And the most difficult materials to join are said to be these. The larger pieces are aluminum, quite soft. The small rod is cemented carbide, extremely hard. The challenge is join these two. Stick them together. That's right. Let's meet the warriors about to do battle. The city of Nagahama, Shiga Prefecture. A precision manufacturer here has taken up our challenge using screws. Processing extra hard materials like cemented carbides and ceramics is their specialty. Their technologies are certified. They can join anything with just one screw. Their products are even used in space, like for this miniature attitude control device. This company's screws are vital to it. At 6,000 RPM, the centrifugal forces are fierce, but these screws never slip out. The best technicians in the company have teamed up as the turn screws. Mini Takafuji will make the male screws. He can make any material fit just right. Toshiro Takeuchi handles the female screws. Once the male screw is in, his internal screws won't let go. Sorry, can you match me? Oh, perfectly. <laughs> Made in heaven. And this match of technicians may be a key to victory. 
their opponents in Amagasaki Hyogo are nice. Their specialty is brazing, melting a filler that binds two workpieces together. The precision of their work has earned them a stream of orders from major corporations. This is a vacuum pump. The slightest leak of any gas moving through it would be intolerable. This join is their technology. It was used in developing the Hayabusa 2 asteroid mission. Fighting for their company's reputation? The Brazers. Their ace is a 22-year company veteran, Takeshi Onishi. Even he has never tried to braze aluminum and cemented carbide. I want to win by applying the expertise we've developed. So show us everything you've got. Amazing. So then... Two very different approaches. Here we have our expert fasteners, the turn screws. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. What prompted you to take up this challenge? It's a brand new topic for us. We never tried to screw into cemented carbide. So right off, we were interested. The materials are so different, you say. But it's just screws, you know. Like an international marriage. Like Kiyoshi Nishikawa and Helen. Right? <laughs> they still go together. Their opponents are the Brazers. Welcome to you, too. Thank you. Why did you accept a challenge? We've joined a lot of materials, but this was an opportunity to add our repertoire. And we're total techno geeks. Techno geeks. Now there's an amazing word. Sounds so serious. <laughs> Thank you, Brazers. The contest rules. Only the 10 millimeters at the tip of the cemented carbide can be processed, whether the joining is done with screws or a filler for brazing. Deadline, one month. We'll see how much force this small area of the join can withstand. They will compete here. We're calling this the Judgment of Hercules. The Judgment of Hercules. Now that is overhyping. It's a machine with awesome Herculean strength. Test case, two aluminum rods. Each is pulled apart from both ends. The first one to slip out or break loses. How long will each entry withstand a force that can tear apart aluminum? Let's see how the two teams have developed their entries. One month till the showdown. The turn screws hold a strategy meeting. Um, what might affect strength? Precision, too, meaning how tight a fit. Any gap between the male and female screws will lead to shaking when they're pulled and a break. So the team aims for a screw that fits without the slightest wobble. Step one is to fabricate male and female screws without the slightest deviation. Takeuchi will machine the female screw from aluminum. He's using the most advanced lathe. With meticulous effort and consummate skill, he drills precisely according to plan. You configure it with all sorts of numerical values. The goal is to get it as close to the ideal form as possible. It took three days. But finally, the female screw is done.
Now it's Fuji's turn. He'll have to fabricate a male screw that exactly matches up with the shape of the female screw. Sorry, can you match me? Oh, perfectly. <laughs> Made in heaven. However, machining cemented carbide is easier said than done. Cemented carbide is hard, but brittle. And if the crests of the screws are chipped, the problem won't just be a matter of snugness. Fuji's secret weapon? The grindstone. Its surface is covered with diamond particles. The particles are so small, they can grind the cemented carbide a little at a time without breaking it. That's cemented carbide. So, I'm a bit nervous right now. Cutting the screw threads takes 30 minutes. Done. No chipping. It's fine. That's pretty tight. Well, I think let's give it a pulling test. The turn screws have got their first prototype. They test it right away, gradually pulling on the screw to measure the force it takes to pull it out. The higher that value, the stronger the join. So how will it do? Starting. It's stripping out the aluminum. It's pulling out. What's it read? What's the force? Two tons. Two tons is just half the strength of steel on steel. Cemented carbide plus aluminum is difficult. Honestly, that's a lower figure than I thought it'd be. The turn screws aren't gonna have it easy. Meanwhile, the brazers are going full speed ahead. It's the first time they've tried to braze aluminum and cemented carbide. Uncharted territory. This is crazy. <laughs> crazy? A call to excellence. Onishi's getting all fired up. First, a simple experiment. They melt some filler onto a piece of cemented carbide. The result? It repels it. It does. That's no good. It just beads up. Uh, the cemented carbide repels the filler. There's no place for it to stick. A stumbling block right at the start. What will Onishi do? Let's try it. Special flux. <laughs> flux? What's the effect of this white paste? It's spreading. Hey, it's accepting it. But why? Metal surfaces have invisible oxides on them. Deposit brazing filler directly on it, and the filler will beat up. 
That's where flux comes into play. If it completely washes off the oxide, the metal filler will then stick directly to the metal. It'll spread smoothly. Preparations are complete. The rod is inserted into the cylinder. Brazing filler has already been placed inside. The gap between the two parts is 0.05 millimeters. The filler has to fill that space evenly for proper adhesion. Rotation ensures that the heat will melt the filler inside evenly. But there's a problem. Aluminum begins to melt at 660 degrees Celsius. But filler melts at 580 degrees. That's a difference of a mere 80 degrees Celsius. Even a little overheating will ruin the aluminum. Onishi has to keep an eagle eye on the temperature and time. The tension is extreme. The filler has melted. But Onishi still does not stop the flames. Well, oh, the aluminum will melt. Stop. That was close. Perfect. Perfect. They succeeded in brazing it before the aluminum melted. So just how strongly have they joined the two? Okay, let's go. It popped out. How did it measure? 2,368 kilos. Made it. That's 2.4 tons. They're a step ahead of the turn screws at the level of a basic vacuum pump. That's the latent power of the brazing filler. Amazing. Onishi-san, on your first try, amazing. Yes. With the temp difference only 80 degrees, that's pretty darn close. That did give us some trouble. I'm sure it did. But you've started out well. The other team is trying with screws. Your aluminum threads got stripped, right? That's right. They had that very first attempt here. Stripped it right out. A millimeter thick, it's going to be pretty soft. This is a problem. The battle's getting fiercer. The brazers posted a result of 2.4 tons. They're analyzing the join with ultrasound, looking for ways to improve their results. Unexpected facts are emerging. There's the bad guy. The red area indicates a gap in the join. If that isn't addressed, better adhesion will be impossible. To eliminate the gap, Onishi takes one big gamble. The plan is... Compare it to his previous method. 
and it'll be obvious. Two minutes, 25 seconds. The filler's melting. They'll continue heating it until just before the aluminum's melting point. Last time, they made it this far. But now... Won't the aluminum melt? He stopped. That was nerve-wracking. Ten more seconds of heating. What effect has it had? Back to the ultrasound. Any gaps? Nothing. Nothing. None at all. Excellent! The key was the temperature of the cemented carbide. During the previous heating period, the filler melted, but the cemented carbide didn't heat up. That meant the filler didn't diffuse properly, and gaps occurred. So Onishi heated for an additional 10 seconds. The cemented carbide heated up sufficiently, and the filler flowed and bonded everywhere with no gaps. Cleverly controlling the heat, he coaxed optimal utility from the brazing filler. That's supreme skill! They're ready for a second test. Will Onishi's strategy pay off? Okay. Begin. The result? 2,549 kilos. They said it was crazy, but now they've bettered their results. Is this a steady march to victory? Back to the turn screws. Theirs is a bitter struggle. Everybody contribute. We've overcome all sorts of stuff before. The boss, Yoichi Azai, comes up with a breakthrough idea. Let's think about different shapes for the screw. Something angular, or how about round? They could change the shape of the crests on the threads. The fruit of their process of trial and error? These squared off crests. Why that shape? Azai's thinking goes as follows. Machining the edges of the male and female screws so they fit perfectly together is extremely difficult. There are always gaps, leading to instability and failure. But with squared corners, they'll be easier to machine, so they fit well with no gaps. Takeuchi makes a trial version of the squared-off female screw first. He checks the workmanship. I want to know if the shape came out right or not. He slices the female screw to look at a cross-section. And finds... It's a clean trapezoid. I thought it would be square. Hmm. The female threads are trapezoidal. Squared off threads could be hard to come by. 
Why did they become trapezoids? Takeuchi focuses on the blades that do the cutting. You can't see it with the naked eye, but a part of the blade was hitting the corners of the crests on the female screws, making them trapezoidal. So he feels that if the shape of the blade is improved, it should be able to cut square angles. Takeuchi is ready for round two. Here's the female screw after it's been drilled. Let's check out the shape. Well... Beautiful. Check it out. Squared off threads as planned. No instability now for sure. But how does it actually perform? Square screw. Go. It's going, going. This is. They've jumped to 2.8 tons. What a turnaround. That's strong enough to pull a truck. The awesome joining power of screws. Next time, the final showdown. Concentrating all their expertise, the two sides have given this the best they've got. I'm a wreck. <laughs> Tremendous force steadily increased. Awesome! Awesome! In the astounding finale, who will emerge as the king of joining? To all our viewers, you'll be glued to your TV sets. <laughs>